guys, Steve here, and thanks for tuning in to the first episode of PokeMath. PokeMath will be a weekly series posted on Saturdays or Sundays, where I plan on discussing with you some of the mathematical intricacies of the Pokemon trading card game. See, a large portion of the game is based on luck, which is related to the field of probability and statistics. As it turns out, this is my preferred field of study. Now, as some of you know, I recently graduated from college with a degree in math. Eventually, I plan on going back to school to get, my, to get my master's degree in stats, and I'm even considering going for a doctorate and becoming a college professor. So, I sort of see PokeMath as an opportunity to learn how to teach as well. Now, what will I be going over in this series? The main goal, like I mentioned, is to discuss statistical points of interest in the trading card game. These topics can also be used to improve your deck building ability. And I know all this sounds like it will be complicated, but I'll do my best to present the information at in a low-level manner. And for today's episode, I'm going to go over some basic probability, and there's nothing more basic than the simple coin flip. Coin flips are a very prevalent part of the card game, and are used for everything from deciding who goes first to seeing if a status ailment will apply. Today, however, I'm going to focus on how coin flips do damage. There are two methods of doing damage via coin flip. The first method, the game will instruct you to flip a certain number of coins and multiply the base damage by a number, the number of heads to get the final damage. The second method tells you to flip coins until a tails appears, and again, multiply the base damage by the number of heads to get your final damage. The first method is very simple, so let's check it out right now. Basically, when you flip a coin, there are two possible results. Heads, which will denote as H, and tails, which will denote as T. To calculate the probability of a result, you take the number of results and divide them by the total number, total number of results. In this example, the total number of results is 2, heads and tails. If we wanted to find the probability of flipping heads, we would take the one result, heads, and divide it by the total number of results, which is heads or tails. Thus, we get a 0.5 or 50% chance of flipping heads. Now, what if we wanted to flip the coin twice? Then the possible results are tails, tails, denoted by TT, heads, tails, tails, heads, and finally, heads, heads. Notice that I have included both heads, tails, and tails, heads, even though they appear to be the same thing. In probability, order matters most of the time, so heads, HT is in fact different from TH. This is one of the most difficult notions of probability to wrap your brain around. Now moving on, let's say we want to find the probability of flipping two heads, like these. We take the number of resu results for this, which is 1, and divide it by the to total number of results, which is 4, as shown here. So we have 1 divided by 4 equals 0.25, which is 25%, and that is the chance of flipping two heads. Now let's compare this to an example in the card game. Consider Matang from Undaunted here. It's double smash attack, if you can read that, there we go. This double smash attack tells the player to flip two coins and multiply the number of heads by 50 to get the final damage. This is identical to the two coin problem we just did. So remember that the outcomes of flipping two coins are tails tails, heads tails, tails heads, and, head, and heads heads. As shown in the previous example, there's a 25% chance of each of these results, because we have 1 in 4 tails tails, 1 in 4 heads tails, 1 in 4 tails heads, and 1 in 4 heads heads. And, based on the card, we can assign a final damage to each of these. 
So, just separate this here. For tails, tails. No heads are flipped, so zero damage is dealt. Four heads, tails. One head is flipped, so that's 50 damage. For tails, heads, same case. Only one heads is flipped, so we have 50 damage. And for heads, heads, two heads are flipped. Two times 50 is 100 damage. Now, this is a good point to discuss the concept of expected value. Expected value is, quite simply, the value you, you would expect to get on average over time. Note that it is not the value you will get, just the one you expect to get when you average all of the values. And it is calculated as such. Multiply each of the final, uh, final damage values by the probability of that value appearing. So in this case, it is 0 times 0.25, or 1 fourth, either way, plus 50 times 0.25. It's for heads, tails. So let me mark these. Tails, tails. Heads, tails. Plus 50 times 0.25. That's tails, heads. And finally, 100 times 0.25 for heads, heads. And from this, we get 0 plus 12.5 plus 12.5 plus 25 and this equals 50. So on average you would expect to deal 50 damage to your opponent each turn. Pretty simple, right? Now let's try and make it a little more complicated and talk about three coin flips. For this example we'll use the monkey trio from black and white. Each monkey has the fury swipes attack which you can see here where the fl player flips three coins and multiplies the number of heads by 40 to get the final damage. Now when working with three coin flips we obviously have some different results here and they are as follows. So moving the coins aside we have tails, tails, tails tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, and finally, heads, heads, heads. This gives us eight total possibilities, and thus a 1 in 8, we add these, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 8. So there's a 1 in 8, or a 12.5% 12 per, yeah, 12 chance of getting each result. Now let's say we wanted to find out the probability of flipping only two heads. That would be two heads and one tails, obviously. We add up the number of results. In this case, we have these three here. And divide that by the total number of results, which again is still eight. So we have three eights, which is about a 37% chance actually 37.5%, but we'll just simplify it to 37 for now. Now once again, we can assign a value to each possibility based on the number of heads. So the damage done, which I'll do over here, is 0 for triple tails, 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 heads has one heads, same with tails, heads, tails, and heads, tails, tails. Heads, heads, tails has two heads, so that's 40 times 2 for 80. Same with heads, tails, heads, and tails, heads, heads. And triple heads has three heads, so that's 40 times 3 for 120 damage. And now we're going to calculate the expected value again. 
If we did the same expected value calculation as with two coin flips, the equation would be rather long and unwieldy and would take a little while to calculate properly. Now, notice that 1 in 8 of the possibilities is 0. Up here, the tails, tails, tails. So we multiply 0 by 1 8. 3 of them are 40. So we do 40 times 3 eighths. Now that is equal to 1 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 8, obviously. And notice that three more uh, have 80. So we have 80 times 3 eighths. Again, same thing there. And finally, one that has 120. So we do 120 times 1 eighth. So we calculate this out. We get 0 plus 15 plus 30 plus 15, which equals 60. Now notice that 60 is not an option for damage. So remember here that expected value is not what you would expect to see on each turn, but rather the average of what you would see over time. So what does all this mean from a practical standpoint? Basically, when a two coin flip is involved, there is a 25% chance of doing zero damage. When a three coin flip is involved, there is a 12.5% chance of doing zero damage. Now this may seem like a really low percentage of it actually happening, but when it, when it inevitably does, you're going to be really mad. You really don't want to use attacks that have a chance of doing nothing, so most players tend to go with more reliable attacks. Thanks for watching today's episode of Pokemath, and I hope you learned a bit about the probability in the training card game, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message or leave a comment below. In next week's episode, I'll be covering the other type of flip-based attack, the flip until tails. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.